So here's a thing I found to be kind of controversial in the realm of guitar players, especially those in the heavy metal genre, and that is the battle between amp simulation and real amplifiers. Today, I'm gonna to throw in my opinion into this entire battle, and I believe that whatever makes sense in the moment is the right thing to do. Sometimes an amp sim is what makes the most sense. Sometimes miking up a real amp is. Some amp sims sound great with, without having much to do. Some amps sound great without having much to do. It all kind of depends on your skill level and your comfort level. But I've always believed that regardless, you should always know how to properly record a real amp because you have to apply that knowledge to the amp simulation anyways, in order to make it sound as best as you possibly can. Now I have an amp custom built for me by Diamond Amplification down in Texas, and it's one hell of an amp. It's kind of got this modern yet vintage vibe, which was perfect for what we were doing in Restless Dreams. Now I'm not gonna run through all the features of this amp, because that's not what I'm trying to do with this video, but I will show you how it sounds at least. I'm going to show you a very basic trick that you can apply to any microphone choice you use or any guitar amp, guitar, whatever. This is just a general uh, recording guitar tip. And I think that knowing this will probably solve maybe up to 50 to 75% of your tone issues when tracking guitars, especially for heavy metal music. I use two mics to track the Phantom, the good old Shure SM57 and my all-time favorite microphone, the Electrovoice RE20. The way I set them up was about maybe an inch away from the grill and dead center in the speaker. Now I put them on different speakers rather than doing two mics on the same speaker. This might not be something you'll want to do with every amp, but I found that the top two speakers had a neat sound that complemented each other nicely. Here's the track with just the SM57. Here's the track with just the Electrovoice RE20. And here they are blended together. What's key is to make sure that the phase is perfect. You want the waveform to rise and dip as closely as possible on both tracks. Half the time, that's the source of a bad tone. I always use some sort of supplemental mic with an SM57. The 57 is great for getting the harsh mids and highs that you need to cut through the mix, but blending it with something like a Sennheiser 421, or in this case, the Electrovoice RE20, adds a lot more to the tone and can make it more full sounding in different frequencies. Now, this is especially the case when you ensure the phase is aligned. If your phase isn't aligned, you can always manually move the region after you are done tracking, but I don't really recommend this method. There are some plugins out there that can help with phase alignment, and I'll probably cover those in the future, but I do believe that you can still get it as you're tracking, and I think that is still the best method rather than using a plug-in or kind of moving it around after. Uh, it's just so much easier and takes way less time and has way less headaches when you do it right as you record it. So I hope this video helps with your guitar recordings. If you have any questions or comments, please leave one in the comment section below. All relevant links are going to be put in the description below as well. 
Make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever another video drops in the series. This is Lucas signing off.